Hey, 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 hey. Someone's at the door, Spark. It's Mr. Saltwater Tank at my house. And he's carrying a big box. What's going on? What's what? What's that big box, dude? Oh, you know, you always wanted another tank, so I brought you a quarantine tank, buddy. Nice. You said you want to put in your bedroom, so I'm on the bed. Your bedroom's upstairs. Let's go. Right on. Jimmy, you now have two, actually three if you count your freshwater tank, three aquariums in your house. You're going to have two saltwater tanks in your house. Welcome to your quarantine setup. This is our quarantine kit that we sell here at saltwateraquarium.com. It's pretty small. But yes, a couple things around that. Number one, the fish that you're going to have are going to be smaller. They're aquacultured. They tend to be smaller, which I like. I like to get smaller fish and let them grow to the tank. It's cool to watch them grow. Make sure you take pictures. I never do that enough. Take a picture of them when they're young and then you watch them grow up. For the fish that are going into your tank, this size is appropriate. If you had, you knew you're going to get like a, a four inch blonde naso, then yes, I would get like a 40 gallon breeder or a 55. But in your case, starting small with a 20 is fine for the fish that are going to go in here. The other thing to keep in mind with this quarantine tank is we're not going to put 10 fish in here at once. We're going to go slow. We might put a half dozen at a time. So we don't need a big tank. It's just more for you to take care of. All right, awesome. So even though my system, once I have it, my display tank up and running, um, I should probably still quarantine. Put I'm going to start with probably a couple of clownfish, and I'll put them in here. Yep. Now, there's a lot of stuff here. Yep. But before I ask you what all that is, I don't put sand in here. Nope. I just, it's just a clean tank right now i did see a video you did on quarantine before and you uh got some big pvc pipe like four inch pvc and put it in there mm. for some hiding places yep that's a good idea right right so they're they clean up easy you can sterilize them very easy it's a way to give a place for the fish to hide and look i know that you know how to get to home depot and i know you know where the plumbing <laughs> is. i've been there a, a, a bit as i'm building out a mixing station yep. i'm taking trips to home depot so and you have a, a 20 gallon high you can grab the pvc pieces inch and a half two inch four inch pieces get a couple elbows tees for things to hide. all right cool and then it has something two things here that are very important first you have a lid so that way the fish that are in here don't jump out Nothing is more heartbreaking to lose a solid fish, but when it's just at the end of quarantine and you walk in here and you're like, here's my crispy clownfish, which was going to go in my tank tomorrow. Huh. Yeah. That sucks. I so don't want a, any of that. It's a lid to keep them in, but this is very important. It has lights in here. Okay, cool. For a long time, I didn't quarantine, put lights on quarantine tanks. And I found that when I did have lights on them, it brought the fish out more. They could see the food. They come out and look around and interact with you more. So it has lights on here, nice LEDs. You're not going to have a heat problem for those lights. So that just fits right on top. Nice. Keeps everything in and lights everything at the same time. All right. Sweet. Now what's all this other stuff? This looks like a f off the back filter like I have on my freshwater, only a little smaller. I was going to say you should be very familiar with this. Very freshwater-esque yeah. right here. It is. So simple hang on back filter. You don't need a lot of fancy filtration for a quarantine tank because we're going to be maybe running medications in here that would just take it out. This is a thing that's set up for about a month. So we need a way to move water. This has pads in here. If we need them for mechanical filtration, that's going to provide a place for nitrifying bacteria. And you can put phosphate pads, carbon, if we need to remove medication. And it hangs on the back and it fits nicely in the lid in our kit. So that's what this is for. Okay. Simple. Filtration. Yep. This is pretty straightforward. I have the same thing in my fresh water. It's a heater. Right. Put so a heater in there. We need a heater. You want to keep the tank around 79 to 81 degrees. A little bit warmer to encourage the big diseases that we're trying to prevent against. Marine velvet and nick that run their course faster if they're on the fish. So we're going to want to keep it warm. 81 is kind of the target. 81 is the top. 79 to 81. Okay. Maybe 80 is just fine. All right. So I, um, and actually I saw thermometers hey there's two of them yeah the stick on kind and and one that goes down in there right so again very freshwater-esque yeah this i've had one of those before this comes i don't have tank. it on there anymore but 
comes with the tank. They're not very accurate. I don't like to use them. You can stick them on there if you want. This is magnetic, sits inside the tank, and that's going to give you an idea of your temperature okay. reading. So you know, you want to keep an eye on that. I found that these heaters are accurate, but keeping a second eye, eye on things. Now there's a couple of uh, other things here. A water conditioner. Yep. So this is one thing where a lot of people get caught up with quarantine. They don't always have an RODI system, or in your case, you don't have salt water ready to go. Since this is a quarantine tank, especially since we're about to fill it, you can use tap water. You can use it for the initial fill. You can use it well, afterwards. Hold on. I can put tap water in it, but it, it's saltwater fish. It has to be salt water. Right. So we don't have to start with RODI water and then make it salty. You can use tap water, use the tap water conditioner to get rid of the chlorine in it. All right. And then make it salty. But yes, you have to make this salty, but you don't have to use RODI water to get it started. Why don't you just use that in your big tank? Well, because in this tank, if this gets dirty, we can do a big water change. We can scrub it up. You're going to clean it between fish that you're quarantining. It doesn't really matter. With your big tank, we want to keep it clean. If something goes wrong, you're not going to tear the whole thing down and start over. Okay. So there's a lot of pollutants that for what a quarantine tank, tap water is fine. Look, if you want to use RDI water, go for it, but keep this around. The other nice thing is you can have this for an emergency kit for your big tank. For some reason, you had to do a large water change. You didn't have RODI water in a pinch. You can dechlorinate tap and go with it. Okay, so it's kind of a dechlorinator. It's just taking your tap water and making it ready to make salt water. Same thing like you okay. did in your freshwater tank. Okay, and then we've got an ammonia alert. Yeah, so the thing about quarantine tanks is there's no sand and there's no rock in there. And so there's not a lot of biological filtration. So you don't want to feed a lot because you can send ammonia levels up because we don't have a lot of things to process the nutrients. So this hangs on the inside of the tank, lets you keep an eye. Ammonia builds up from what, fish waste? Fish waste. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep, so that hangs on the inside of the tank and just lets you And it has, uh, it has um, basically four little dials on it. It's one safe to alarming to toxic. It'll turn colors based on what's going on in the tank. Okay, oh, it changes color? Yeah, the little thing in the center changes. Okay. You I don't, don't have to do anything. All right, I don't want to change into toxic. Super simple. <laughs> I don't want toxic in there. Whew. What is this? This is, I have no idea what this is. So what this, is this? This is Seachem scupramine. This is a copper medication, which comes to a decision point about your quarantine tank and people have to make as well. You can do something called prophylactically treat your fish, which is part of quarantining is looking at the fish. And if you see a disease, then you treat the disease. What I'm really concerned about most is marine velvet and ick. They're parasitic diseases. They look like white spots on the fish. Okay. If you want to take it up a notch, then you can just go ahead and say, hey, I absolutely don't want those in my tank. I'm going to go ahead and treat you with the medication against those diseases, whether you have it or not. Just do, you, do you do that? I do. All my fish go through a full copper treatment. Really? Yep. Just in case. So they're kind of, they're all pre-medicated before they're going in there. And that's what you're doing in here. Yep. Same thing. You're treating them as if they had it. I'm treating them as they have it. You don't have to do that. I like to It's do not that. harmful to do that? If you do it right, and I'll talk you through that, it's very effective. I've done this even with sensitive fish. It works great. Not a problem with it. And then I know the fish going into my tank when mm. done properly are clean. All right. That, that sounds great. So you're basically treating them as if they had it. Exactly. And then uh, you know that they don't. Right. Okay. So we do that and then grab... Your nitrate kit. Nitrate? Yep, so nitrate, and there's a copper test kit as well. Copper. This is to make sure you put the right amount of copper in the tank. You don't want to overdo it, because then it can be toxic. But you okay. don't want to underdo it, because then it's not effective. So these two go together. And then All right. we talked about nutrients. You want to keep an eye on your nitrates. If your nitrates get too high in here, then you want to do a water change. Okay. Simple to use nitrate test What kit. was the other? Those ammonia. Ammonia. Ammonia is from fish weights. Nitrate so happens how? Nitrified bacteria would take the ammonia, would take it through it, basically a way of digesting it, and then end up in nitrate. Okay. So this is an instant read. Okay. You want to do a test for this. Okay. Okay. I still have one more little bottle over here. Ah, the good stuff. The good stuff. I can't read through all the nice packaging. I've but used it so much, I know what it is. What is it? This is Dr. Tim's one and only nitrified bacteria. So since this is a fresh saltwater tank. It's sterile. We have to put the bacteria to digest the ammonia, to process the ammonia, to take it to nitrite, to then take it to nitrate. So 
we bomb the tank with nitrifying bacteria. All what right. you do with this stuff, shake it up. Once the temperature is right and the salinity is right, dump it in and you're off to the races. All right. So it comes with a bottle of that to start this. Now, what you don't want to do is go, oh, this is a fresh tank. I'm going to call my buddy who's got a saltwater tank. I'm going to go get a piece of rock from his tank or water from his tank and put it in here. Because then if his fish are sick, they could be bringing in a disease to your fish. Right. We're still going to treat them against it, but we want to keep things as biosecure as we can. That makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. I've got um, just three other things here. We've got some, looks like quarter inch, <laughs> quarter, quarter inch, inch uh, tubing, yep. straw for drinking, so, drinking straw. So this is an acclimator. So when you put fish into your tank, whether it be this tank or your display tank downstairs, when you get up and rolling, we don't want to just dump them in. You want to drip them, acclimate them slowly to the tank. So I'll show you how to use that, but this is the handy dandy drip kit that we have here at saltwateraquarium.com. It oh. makes drip acclimation super simple. D drip acclimating. Drip acclimate. We'll Dripping into what? We're going to drip water from whatever tank they're going into, into the bucket or the bag where the fish is. So they're not going to move straight from here into the they are in the sense well i gotta walk downstairs with them so you gotta, gotta walk they downstairs. gotta get here but you're not gonna net i can't them. just scoop a cup of water from here no because then i'm bringing the water from here it's not so much that because if the fish are clean in here then they're clean enough for a display tank it's more about let's say this is 81 degrees the tank downstairs is 76 and then your ph is different as well you can send them in a shock okay imagine going from minnesota snowstorm to orlando florida in 10 seconds yeah yes yeah, not good that's not good so the drip acclimation kit makes drip acclimating them very simple we'll talk about that but this makes the drip easy and you want to clip so that this doesn't fall out of your tank or out of the bucket makes it very easy so i'm dripping out of here into a bucket or the bag where the fish is either one okay we'll talk about acclimating when we get there okay but this makes it super simple. so when we get there i have the tool to do it of and this, I know what this is. Yeah, fishnet. Fishnet. Now, here's the thing about fishnets. Ideally, we wouldn't use them to get the fish out of the tank. Because it, fish have slime coat on them. You net them, it can abrade that slime coat. Mm. Right? But, so then what you can do is you can get a jar or a bowl. Drain the tank down, because when you drain the ocean, it's really easy to catch fish. Put the bowl in there, and then you can just encourage the fish to go towards the bowl or jar with the net. So it's more of a direct them right. if instrument. You, if you have to net them, you can, but ideally you would not just get in there and net the fish and throw it in the bucket or the bag. I feel so bad right now. Why? Because my, my uh, anytime I ever did anything moving my freshwater fish, I always net, net them well, with a fre net. Freshwater fish are pretty bulletproof. In an ideal world, you wouldn't. I like to be a little <sighs> gentler with saltwater fish. So we have it as part of the kit. So this oh, is, I'm learning, dude. Everything you need to quarantine your fish, short of the PVC pieces. Again, get various sizes. You can get that locally, but everything you need is right here in the kit. Except for salt. Except for salt, because look, here's the thing about salt. You can use a non-reef tank salt. The salt that we're going to put in your tank, that's for a reef tank. It has higher calcium, higher magnesium, higher alkalinity. Doesn't matter as fish, they don't care. You don't want to use table salt, but you can use an instant ocean product, a salt that's not necessarily. So the Dr. Tim's doesn't do it. Nope, Dr. Tim's does not make it salty. Doesn't make it salty. So that's just the bacteria that I need in there to make it livable salt water. Right. Now, do you do the same thing in in the the big system? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. So let's get this running, and I want to buy some fish. Now the last thing that we got to talk about is. Where's this thing sitting? You're confident that this dresser can hold this tank. You fill it up, it's going to be oh, 100 I can stand together. on this. I'm Well, I'm not going to talk about how much I weigh, but I, it's a lot more than this. <laughs> okay. And so I stood maybe, on this and walked around to the edge just for my peace of mind so it doesn't bow. Uh, dude, you can jump up on here. It's I, I have no worries. Okay. So the last thing to think about with where you're going to put your quarantine tank is two things. One, we don't want to put it in like a kitchen area because then if you come in late at night or you get up early in the morning when the lights aren't on, you turn on the room lights and then it shocks the fish. The flip side of that is we want to put it somewhere where you're going to see them. We want them to get used to you. If they only see you once a day or twice a day when you come to check on them, then 
your new thing all of a sudden, all the time, every day, they don't really get used to you. So you want to put it somewhere that will support the tank, ideally somewhere where they're going to see you walking around or you know you're going to walk in. In this case, this room's right by your bedroom. You're going to be coming in here frequently. You're probably going to be coming oh, My video game here. station's right here. Perfect. That's not going to freak them out when I'm playing Gran Turismo and I'm driving my... I do Just as long as you're not doing it at 10 o'clock at night. Like if the lights are off in this room... No, I go to bed by then. Try to keep I'm the old. lights off in the room. Yeah. If they're not on, then don't turn them on until... Well, my dog's crates are in here. This is a spare bedroom. Um, my dresser's in here because my master, my upstairs bedroom that, um, that I use is pretty small. So I come in here and I get my clothes every day and I play games in here. But it's just kind of a, a multi-purpose game room, gaming yep. room right now for my video game. And it makes sense for it to be in here. Now, it is up the stairs and a long way from my display tank, but... You know, the fish are going to move in a little bowl or whatever down right. to the display tank. When you want to do a water change, you can do into a five-gallon bucket. That's 25% in here. Mix up tap water from the sink. Add your dechlorinator. Add in your salt. Put it back in here. Yeah. And I'm going to do the same thing with, with corals. Do I quarantine them in here? So you would not quarantine them in here. Here's the thing that I found about quarantining corals. Okay. In an ideal world, you would, but also if you're going to that extent to quarantine corals, then you would keep fish away from them so that the coral doesn't potentially harbor the fish disease. But I found when I quarantine corals, since there's no fish around, the water's very clean, the corals didn't make it. So for me, I'm willing to take the risk of not quarantining the corals. I bring them right in. I dip the coral. We'll talk about that when we get to corals in your tank. Okay. But I found that if I try quarantine corals in a true coral quarantine system that doesn't have fish, they don't make it. Hmm, interesting. All right. You also don't have enough strong enough lights on this tank to grow or keep coral alive. So this is good for fish quarantine. Without some modifications, it's not going to work for coral quarantine. All right. Well, while I have Mr. Saltwater tank here. Might as well ask me a question, Jimmy. And I've got a full system here. Do you have a few minutes? Can we put some water in here and add the the Mr. Tim, Dr. Tim? You want to get that started? And, well, if I put the water in here and I treat it, is it... I still have to put salt in here. Yep. And I have to test my salinity. Yep. Okay. So how far away am I... I mean, this is here. I yep. can And I can put tap water in it. Yep. If I can set this up quickly and put salt in here... Can I order a couple of clownfish and start quarantining them? Sure. Sweet. In fact, what you don't want to do is yes. get it set up, put the bacteria in, and then wait a week. Because the bacteria doesn't have anything to eat. It needs fish waste okay. to eat. So put this in when you put your fish in. Put the bacteria in. Don't set it up. Put the bacteria in. So like in. the day of? I put the fish in, put the bacteria in, and you're off to the races. Really? Yep. Okay. So I just need to do, fill it up with tap water. Put the uh, the tap water stuff. Yep. What did you call this again? Dechlorinator. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Dechlorinator. Not I'm going to put the dechlorinator in there. Yep. And the salt. Get my salinity correct. Yep. Then I'm going to order some fish. When I get a couple of clownfish, I'm going to put them in there. Yep. And then I'm going to put my Dr. Tim's in there, and I'm off to the races. I'm going to one up here. You can get three fish. I can get three fish. You can get three fish. Here's what I would do. A pair of clownfish and an orchid dotty back. Orchid dotty backs sometimes have a bad name. Orchids, I found are very gentle. They're actually pretty reclusive, so it's kind of fun. You're like, where's the orchid dotty back today? Other dotties I'm not a fan of. Orchids I'm fine. We don't want to overload this with fish, but two clownfish and an orchid dotty back, great starter fish, and not too much for the tank. All right. Now, I don't want to jump ahead because we're really just talking about quarantine tank, but um, when I talked to Jordan about what starter fish, he was showing me there were like so many species of clownfish yeah i didn't know there were so many i just thought it was like nemo and marlin and that's for, that's, that's what they look like but yeah. i saw some really cool ones that had other colors than just that orange and white yeah and i think you can mix the the clownfish i'll, I'll get two of the same species to start right but i think i'm gonna do uh, and of course i'm not gonna do just all clownfish but clownfish are cool and I mean, they're Nemo, so that's cool. I used to work at Nemo at Disney, so, <laughs> so um, here's the thing. That's why I'm kind of I'm actually excited about it. With clowns in your tank, I would do a pair and leave it at that. Okay, do you a pair of clownfish. Two or three pairs, but you really want them to come in together. I found it doesn't work out. Just stick with your pair and go with it. Okay, 
All right. Now, if you want orange clowns, you want black clowns, take your pick. Make sure they're the same species, like you said. Yeah. Pick any ones you want. All right. I'm going to do that today. I'm All right. I'm setting this thing up, up, up today. So once I have this and I have my fish, um, what do you recommend I do next? You got your quarantine. You're running through quarantine. You got to get your tank up and rolling. I'm very close. Well, very close isn't good enough, Jimmy. You got to be done. <laughs> All right, get to it. I'm out. All right. Thanks again, Mark. <laughs>